Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos involving genetics. This video will focus on genetic traits and how they can be passed on from generation to generation using a tool called a pedigree. An example pedigree is provided on this slide. Most of this video will describe how pedigrees can be used, as well as what all of the different symbols and shapes and lines on pedigrees mean. Pedigrees are incredibly useful genetics tools. Using pedigrees, you can often determine if a trait is dominant or if it's recessive, if it's located on a sex chromosome, and how likely it might be to pass on a given trait to offspring. In addition, you can apply knowledge of Punnett squares and probability to real-world scenarios. Pedigrees were even more useful prior to modern genetic testing techniques. It's now possible, and inexpensive and non-invasive, to determine if you have or if you carry most genetic disorders even before you're born. Before you can interpret a pedigree, you need to be familiar with a number of symbols, some of which are indicated in the picture to the right. The next few slides will focus on these basics. One important characteristic of pedigrees involves the shape of the symbols. In pedigrees, squares represent males, while circles represent females. There are many lines within pedigrees connecting these circles and squares. Horizontal lines that connect two individuals indicate that they produced offspring and they're often referred to as a marriage line. Vertical lines can be referred to as offspring lines. They indicate which individuals were produced from which two parents. They might also be referred to as a bloodline, indicating which individuals are related by blood. To identify individuals without merely pointing, each square and circle needs to be identifiable. The first step to doing so is by using Roman numerals. Roman numerals are used to exhibit different generations in pedigrees. The second way that individuals can be identified are by using typical numbers, or Arabic numerals. When you use Roman numerals in conjunction with Arabic numerals, you can identify a single person quite easily. Finally, shading of circles and squares can be used to demonstrate an individual's phenotype. Most frequently, individuals with a particular disorder or trait would be indicated by a shaded box or circle. What I'll do now is ask a number of questions and answer them in order to provide some pedigree practice. Where is individual Roman numeral 2, 3 in this pedigree? First, look for the Roman numeral on the left. In this row, find the Arabic numeral 3. This is the individual that was being referred to. The second question, is Roman numeral 2, 3 a male or a female? Since this individual is represented by a square, this would be a male. Question number three, is Roman numeral 2, 3 married or not married? The correct answer would be married because there is a horizontal line connecting this individual to Roman numeral 2, 4 and they have three different children. Question number four, does Roman numeral 2, 3 have this particular trait? The answer is no, that this box is not shaded blue, so this individual does not have this particular characteristic. Question number five, is Roman numeral 2, 3 related to Roman numeral 2, 8 by blood? Here is the individual identified as Roman numeral 2, 8. Both individuals are connected by vertical lines, indicated that they are brother and sister. Question number six, what is the relationship between Roman numeral 3, 2 and Roman numeral 2, 5? First, identify who they are using the methods described earlier. Roman numeral 2, 3 is Roman numeral 3, 2's father's sister. That would make the individuals an aunt and a nephew. Try to imagine yourself as one of these individuals and picture your own family members, if that helps. That is the end of this video, Introducing Pedigrees. If you are interested in learning about any other concepts relating to genetics or any other themes of biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.